On this International Women's Day, I want you to meet someone who has changed the way you see the world, but you've probably never heard her name. Adrienne Arsh has spent decades working to build a more resilient society, one donation at a time. And at 81, Adrian is not slowing down. You just put one foot in front of the other. That's all my perception is of life, which becomes another way of saying resilience. For Adrienne Arsh, the ability to keep going has powered her quest for answers for at least 40 years. It began with the tragic loss of her beloved younger sister. Allison was a linguist who was arrested by the KGB during the Cold War. When she returned home to the US, everything had changed. She was deeply shaken. Uh, we might call it PTSD today, but in any event, within two years she had committed suicide. There was never anything that I can imagine that would be a better place to be than being alive. And so I began to research, talk, and find out what I could about uh, resilience. That capacity to withstand and overcome difficulties was already embedded in the Arsht family DNA. Adrian's grandparents fled Kyiv for a better life in the U.S. Her high-achieving parents exposed their daughters to the value of hard work and service. This was a picture of my mother, the first woman judge in Delaware. Her mother, the Honorable Roxana Cannon Arsh, was a trailblazer who inspired the likes of Sandra Day O'Connor. That was my mother's dicky that she got from England, and she gave it to Sandra. Adrian became the 11th woman admitted Actually, to the Delaware Bar. Her career took her to the legal department of TWA in New York, then to a law firm here in D.C. She founded a title company and then ventured south to run her family-owned Total Bank in Magic City. Tell us about why you were drawn to the humanity there. The bank that I was running and had bought was founded by Cuban Americans, and so my employees, my customers, were all um, Hispanic. And you invested heavily in language, in the arts, in resilience, um, in buildings, in spaces that impact the Latin American community in Miami. Absolutely. Now she's back here in D.C. to further that mission. Where are we? Where are we here? Well, we're coming into, people call it the Great Room, the Concert Hall. Um, I think of it as the reason I bought the house. This is the folly. Adrian renovated and restored this historic Chevy Chase estate during the pandemic. There's another one over there. Now it offers a backdrop for Adrian to ponder and carry out her life's work, giving away nearly all of her fortune to figure out how we and the world around us can keep going when the going gets tough. Deciding who will get what is something that comes from the gut. I just say I know it when I see it. I tend to look for something that nobody else has supported. Adrian has made multi-million dollar gifts to keep this quintessential human trait on the map. In 2008, she donated 30 million to what is now known as the Adrian Arsh Center for the Performing Arts in Miami. She gave 25 million to endow a Latin America Center at the Atlantic Council here in DC to focus on the role of South America. She's funding the Metropolitan Museum's first paid internship program with $5 million. The Adrian Arsh Rockefeller Foundation Resilience Center was funded in part by her generosity. And more recently, Adrian donated $10 million to launch the Adrian Arsh Community-Based Resilience Solutions Initiative here at the Smithsonian Institution to research tropical resilience and educate us about the role it plays in shaping the world around us. I think about how you touch so many parts of the human experience that most people may not even know. And so I wonder, do you know who you are? And I would say, I frequently say, I don't get it. I, I'm just me. I don't know who I am. Um, I just put one foot in front of the other. In a pair of six-inch heels, 
Adrienne does know at least one thing about who she is, especially as a woman who has carved out success in spaces where she was almost always the only woman in the room. Perhaps you get a sense when you observe what she collects around her stately surroundings. There's one there in particular oh, that you badass. really like. Oh, yeah, that is my nickname. Yeah. What does that mean? Gutsy, courageous, standing up for what you believe. Wow. That's Adrian. <laughs> Thank you for introducing us to Adrian Arsh. What, what an <laughs> incredible woman with a big heart. She is. I mean, we spent over four hours with yeah. her, and there was obviously no way to encapsulate the whole story here. But you and I have been talking about this. Can we talk about her so, house? Oh, yes. <laughs> so you saw the Great Hall, the yeah. concert room, where there are actually concerts. But the bones of that house have been there since 1893. Wow. And that home itself has hosted every president from Grover Cleveland to George W. Bush. Mm. So that home has a history. Yeah. But I have to tell you, um, Adrienne talks about a quote that really stuck with me. And she says that her life is a gift and she feels a responsibility because it. She said, quote, I rent my time here on earth mm. and I'm blessed to live in a very high rent district and I would pay my rent accordingly. She's also funding resources around education and health care to benefit immigrant families and heat officers around the globe to tackle the changing climate. And we just learned, just learned yesterday, that she um, is funding what's called the Arsh Rock Global Ambassador for Heat, Health and Gender. Mm -hmm. And that person will be none other than Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton. So the giving does not end for her. The giving does not end. Yeah. This is her life's mission. This is her life's work. And so much of what we learn about how we keep going, yeah. regardless of what's happening in our lives, especially when it comes to climate and all these other things, yeah. we can point to Adrian Arsh as part of the reason why. A lesson for all of us yeah. today. Yeah, so now we know. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah.